It's beautiful on the river. One fall day. And this is a beautiful spot. On the Matanzas River near Crescent Beach. The tide going in and the wind blowing from the northeast. It looked like a community get-together was happening. Good to see you. Pat Hamilton has lived along this river almost his whole life. I mean, I, this is where I grew up. He put this gathering together and coming by boat were the guest of honor. Those VIPs all fit into five buckets. Go ahead and just dip it in there. They are literally the life of the party. Yeah, they're swimming around there. The water in the buckets looks clear. Here they are. But that water is chock full of microscopic clam larvae. Oh, too cool. They may be tiny, but they're super. These are the super clams. Wow. Yeah, they're moving and shaking. Hamilton and some of his neighbors and community groups raised $25,000 to grow and release these microscopic clams into the Matanzas River. Really, we have a community that is interested in taking care of our area. And in the last decade or so, biochemist Dr. Todd Osborne says there are fewer clams in the Matanzas River. We're just not seeing them like we used to. Why? We think that there's either been a die-off event or it could be that there are other unknown water quality issues that we don't measure. So Osborne and shellfish aquaculturist Mike Sullivan recently gathered the biggest, healthiest clams they could find in the Matanzas River and spawned millions of them in tanks at Sullivan's Nursery and at the UF Whitney Marine Lab, creating the super clam. That means that they are adept and naturally selected for this particular region where we're, we're putting them back out. These are these are clams that have survived through all kinds of, of trauma. Cup by cup. These folks set the super clam larva loose. No genetic enhancement other than what Mother Nature's done for us. Osborne says it's kind of hard to predict how many of these clams will survive, but he's guessing, estimating that it'll be somewhere between 10 to 30 percent will make it into the next year. 20 million clam larvae, five buckets worth into the Matanzas River. It's the 23 mile long river that runs from the St. Augustine Inlet by Volano Beach next to downtown St. Augustine and all the way to the Matanzas Inlet. The goal here is to revive the clam population and even clean up the Matanzas River. <laughs> because clams are... The liver of the river. They are pulling things out of the water column, you know, just like wetlands or kidneys of the landscape. Bivalves and filter feeders are the, are the mechanism to, to clarify waters. As more people move into the area and build along the river, it's more susceptible to runoff, pollutants, and agents that create toxic blue-green algae that affects water quality, harms the tourism industry, and threatens wildlife. This is the healthiest estuary on the east coast of Florida, and it is slowly declining. It's dying, it's, it's getting a, a million paper cuts. This is a way to make it a tiny bit better tiny bit better with teeny larvae that have a big task at hand for a place Hamilton and others call home. In St. Johns County, Jessica Clark, First Coast News, on your side.